Sony's 2015 film Goosebumps, based on the iconic young adult series of books of the same name, took the right approach in engaging with the source material. Rather than attempting to adapt one or more storyline into a feature-length film, Sony instead opted to engage with the series as a whole. The world of the characters is thus an exaggerated version of our own, in which the books are well known and R.L. Stein is a real person, albeit more... Jack Black. Hello, I'm R.L. Stein. I write the Goosebumps books. Ah, yes! High five! Oh, 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 oh. Bad idea. So Slappy, either the most iconic or most marketable monster from the books, is given a crucial role in the story, and his relationship with Stein was honestly an intriguing touch, and something the writers could never have explored with just a straight up adaption of one of the Night of the Living Dummy books. My biggest criticism is that most of the other iconic monsters from the series were either absent or conglomerated into a villainous mesh, and didn't get much individual time in the spotlight. However, I thought it was great for both casual fans and fans of the original series, and look forward to the next installation in the Goosebumps cinematic universe. Until I saw the trailer. They're moving. So tiny and cute, what can they possibly do? Sonny, they're just gummy bears. 2018's Goosebumps 2 Haunted Halloween is a mashup of innumerable different plot elements and storylines, only some of which are related to the original book series. The story revolves around an unfinished Goosebumps book called Haunted Halloween that Stein wrote when he was a young writer living in Wardenclyffe, New York, which coincidentally also happens to house an abandoned Tesla tower. When the book is open, Slappy, back and ready for vengeance, sets about using the Tesla Tower to broadcast his magic across the town and bring the Halloween decorations to life. And it's fine, the action is fun and chaotic, the characters aren't too annoying, and the visuals are mostly vibrant and clever. It isn't really Goosebumps though. Focusing on a lost, unfinished book in the Goosebumps canon is a really neat idea. I wonder what sort of dark, twisted story Stein had in his mind before he had to abandon it. Oh. Halloween decorations coming to life. That's, that's pretty lame. Why does the plot of this unfinished book have to be the basis of Slappy's actions? Why doesn't he just decide to do it? I really have to question the marketing executives who decided to make use of the Goosebumps name and almost nothing else. If you're annoyed about the lack of screen time for iconic monsters in the first film, you aren't gonna like this. Whereas Slappy's army in the first film was at least comprised of some familiar faces, in this there's only generic Halloween costumes and decorations. Why didn't they at least try to make them Goosebumps related? Ken Jeong plays a fun role as a massive Goosebumps fan. Let me get this straight. We are living a Goosebumps story right now? Okay, clearly you're a fan. This is the greatest thing I've ever heard! Oh, hold on, let me get, let me get, let me get. Um, mm, Monster Blood. No, two on the nose. As established in the previous film, everyone in this world is clearly aware of the Goosebumps books. Yet, look at the costumes he dresses the protagonist in after the movie's obligatory suiting up montage. How generic can you get? It could have easily been a Horrorland horror, Scarecrow walking at midnight, a beast from the east. Hell, one of them could have dressed up as Slappy, that could have been fun. The Halloween coming alive concept was the perfect pass to utilise some of the trademark Goosebumps monsters brought alive in Jacobus' cover art, and it's baffling that it wasn't taken. Slappy is central once again, which is fine. It's actually good, as it continues to follow his motivations from the first film. Scorned by the rejection of his father, he sets out to establish himself within a new family, and some of the best scenes in the film come from him showing his menacing side in trying to protect them. Cut the whole unfinished Lost Goosebumps book crap, this could have been the basis for a whole movie. Slappy in the books never has any motivation besides just being mean for the sake of it. Reimagining him as twisted and bitter from a lack of a family is, I'm gonna say it, a definite improvement from the books. I have to say something about the dummy's presentation though, let's be clear, having an actual dummy present on set is definitely preferable to having the actors interact with a rubbery, computer-generated abomination. The downside is, well, it's an actual dummy present on set. A real one. 
one that isn't alive. It makes it hard to make your main antagonist that expressive or threatening when he is, in essence, a toy. But compare it to the 90s TV series. Inseparable, you are my slave. No, I'm not going to be your slave. You can't make me. Uh, I can make you do anything I want. You have no choice. Your whole family thinks you're crazy. I've seen to that. They somehow managed to do more with less. Plus, the voice acting in this is so... bland. I know Jack Black voiced Slappy in the first film to better reflect Stein's relationship with his creation, but it would have been a good chance to add some more character or menace now that Arl Stein isn't actually in this movie. Oh wait, Arl Stein is in this movie. Why is Arl Stein in this movie? He was a pivotal character in the first film. Here, he's an afterthought, appearing 10 minutes from the end after the heroes have already saved the day without him. I don't know if the execs wanted to tack Jack Black in as the only main star of the film, or they had to hastily add him after the test audience is like, where's School of Rock? But he serves no purpose. I cannot stress this enough, whatsoever. I knew it! I knew I came up with that first! Okay, that was pretty good. Goosebumps 2 is fine. If you're a child, which I hear is what both the books and films are aimed at, you're going to enjoy it for 90 minutes and then never remember it again for as long as you live. Which I've no doubt is exactly what Sony intended. But as a Goosebumps fan, I just find it too disconnected from both the source material and the legacy of the books. I just expected more after the first film. They do take the time to set up for a cliffhanger in which both Stein and Slappy would be central again for another movie, but I don't think this movie did gangbusters and I'm not holding my breath for a sequel. It's a shame, despite my misgivings about his presentation, that dummy's pretty marketable and I could see the studio using him as a recurring villain to link all the films in this Goosebumps cinematic universe together. But regardless of the future of the Goosebumps Cinematic Universe, let's just all take the time to grab our copies of the 90s TV series and watch live-action Goosebumps done right. Oh, hands! Beautiful hands!